Okay, so the next part of this, we're getting into vector components. Now, what a component is, it's basically the different pieces of a vector. So a vector can have a horizontal component and it also has a vertical component to it. Uh, so based on that, we wanna find a way to take this information and break it up into components. This is something that's gonna be important for those of you going on to physics. You wanna find a way to take that vector and separate into the A and B components there. So all you need is the magnitude, how, how much uh, strength there is or how long the vector is. And if you have the angle that, it, that the force is going at, you'll be able to break it up into components. Now why would components be important? Well, when we add these together, you may have two vectors given with this information, the magnitude and the uh, angle. And what we want to do is break them up into components, the horizontal and the vertical components. You're going to add the, the, all the horizontal and vertical ones together. That's going to give you your resultant vector. So that's the idea what we want to get to here. So we want to come up with a way by using trig to take this information and find out what A and B are in terms of the magnitude and our angle uh, alpha that's given there. So let's go ahead and uh, derive this. So first of all, I have the adjacent side and I have the hypotenuse if you're using the alpha. And so we need to find a trig function that relates to those two. That's gonna be your cosine, that's your adjacent over hypotenuse. So we can write this as cosine alpha equals adjacent A over hypotenuse, which is magnitude of V. And if I take this and, and solve that uh, for A, I get magnitude of V times cosine alpha. That's a way that I can represent the horizontal part based off of the magnitude and the alpha there. Next, I want to relate the B. Now the B isn't involving the opposite, so that's opposite over hypotenuse. That's sine alpha is equal to the opposite, which is B, over the hypotenuse, which is magnitude of V. And if I solve that for B, I get magnitude of V times sine alpha. So now I can put these together and write this in the vector component form. My vector V now can be written this way, magnitude of V cosine alpha, that's the I, that's the uh, um, horizontal component. Again, I could write that also as a bold if I wanted to, so either notation I can use for that. And then the, the uh, vertical component is magnitude of V sine alpha, and that's gonna be my J. So what I've done is I've taken this information, if I only have a magnitude and an angle given, I'm able to recreate it and write it in vector component form. So this would allow me to do this for multiple vectors so I could add all the I components and the J components together and get the result, which is eventually what we're gonna be doing uh, at the end of this section. So now we're just doing the setup for it. So now that we've derived the formula, let's take a look at an example. Okay, now for the example, we're given the magnitude is eight and alpha is given as 30 degrees. What they're saying to do is take this information and write out a vector in terms of I and J. So the formula we just talked about was this one. This is a way that you can take the given information and turn that information into a vector in this format. So that's the, the formula we just derived. And so now we're going to put in the information and we can write this in terms of I and J. So we're given that magnitude of V is eight and alpha is 30 degrees. So all we gotta do is simply put that information in and we're gonna simplify it. That'll give us our I and J components. Eight sine 30 degrees, J. Okay, so now that we have this, we're just gonna simplify because we have our table uh, 30 degrees is on our uh, unit circle or a table. We can get the exact value for each of these. Cosine 30 is the value is square root of 3 over 2. That's the exact value. This one is going to be sine 30 is 1 half uh, from uh, our table. And now we're just going to simplify this. We get V is equal to 4 square root of 3 because that cancels. And then this is going to be 4 and then J. So this is as far as we can go. We've taken again, what we did was we took this given information 
and we put it into the formula and we now broke it up into components and so we're taking that information and now we were able to write it out in component form using the I and the J.